What's up guys, Jameson Rubik's Guy here. Today we're going to be unboxing a Yu-Gi-Oh collection that I purchased worth about $3,000. I paid $5.75 for it. And we're going to be answering the question, do small dollar cards really sell on TCG Player? Spoiler alert! Yeah, they do. I know you're normally into Pokemon Go content or Rubik's Cube stuff, but my other big passion is Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So if you like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon Go, or maybe Rubik's Cube content, consider dropping a like, subscribing, and leaving a comment. If you want to sell me your collection, feel free to tweet me at Rubik's Guy on Twitter, obviously, because that's what tweeting is. Medium flat rate box and a large. Roughly 7,500 bulk cards including about a thousand of each rares and hollows on top of that roughly a thousand dollars worth of five dollars plus stuff so my guess here is that the higher end stuff is in these deck boxes which are pretty cool Ooh, these are some gold cards there's a chance there's a dark magician girl in these which has jumped up i should have bought a bunch of those when they're like four bucks nope these are the movie gold pack things so just give you a brief idea of what's in here. It's just a lot of common bulk. Um, looks like it's some older stuff too. So there's a chance that we might get a rescue cat. And those are like 10 bucks a pop right now. I had 30 of them, sold them when they were 650. Was super proud of myself. And then they jumped to 14. That's just the name of the game here. You have to figure out when the right time to sell is and you'll almost, all, almost never hit it right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Nian Cat. All right, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. Um, I'm gonna grab a big empty five row box, like one of these, and just start loading bulk into it. So let's get all this bulk into the box here. I remember when this was a $20 super, but then I think it got that gold reprint, so not anymore. And a damaged two cent rare. I want my money back. Let's get this box out of the way. And this battery's about to die. I have to throw away so many of my camera batteries, it's sad. So I'm gonna start getting into the second box now. There we go. Binder. And a whole bunch more bulk. And these are the one to three dollar hollows I gather. I buy my stamps in bulk, so I get those for like 35 cents each. And because of the shortage of top loaders, they've skyrocketed in price. I was able to buy a case of a thousand for 40 bucks back in 2014. Now with the pandemic, it's like over two hundred dollars for a thousand. So I've switched to shipping shield. I developed a personal collection connection with the guy on Twitter, and I'd highly recommend these. They're about $80 to $90 for a pack of a thousand. It's just cardboard that folds. And I write thank you on all of them. It's the same size as a top loader, but they can hold like easily six, probably close to 10 cards. And a top loader, you'd have to really shove six in there without a sleeve. And they just ship just fine. They're a little bit thicker, but it still works. Oh, I love it when I see that. Just pure perfect condition cards, clearly from a structure deck, because they're all together. One of these boxes holds 7,000 cards. It's 1,400 per row. So when I fill it, I'll know that I have 7,000 bulk. This is what the bulk turned into. A five row box, half of, and a full of an 800 count box. Normally a five row box for sports cards is 5,000, but it holds 7,000 Yu-Gi-Oh. But for now, time to organize all these. So here's the deal, guys. I usually don't list things under like three bucks. I'd rather just wait and see if like this dollar card or whatever it's worth might one day go up because I can just store it back there and eventually go through and be like, hey, it's 10 bucks now. If I truly wanted to see how much I could get for this collection based upon what I paid, I would list everything and then just say, hey, it's done. So I might do that. And now the money binder, literally. This is apparently worth about $1,000, so let's see what I can do here. I'm literally holding the tripod because there's no room on the table. And I completely forgot about these deck boxes, so maybe these are the one to three dollar things. And I got a really cool deck box that I've never had before. A lot of hollows here. Let's just flip through first. 
so you can get an idea of everything that's in here. Oh, and he said there were some duplicates. Wow, okay, he only showed me one Tiaramisu. There's three comments in there and they're pricey. I saw that BLS and I thought for a sec it was a collector's rare and I was about to poop myself. The rest is empty. So just these few pages might be about $1,000 for cards. We will check. No emergency call. Raw yellow mega pack, they're all first. So we go on here, emergency teleport, raw yellow. Add three of them. And then the app crashes, because it's so stable. So let's take a look at Ring of Destruction. This is an ultimate rare. I love ultimates, man. And it's from Duelist Pack Kaiba. So some of these older ones that aren't like super iconic, like obviously a first edition Dark Magician Girl from MFC is worth crazy amounts, but the XE Tank Cannon first, I mean, it's kind of iconic, it's not that crazy. So, yeah, first edition's gonna make it worth a lot more, but will people actually buy it? Whereas, like, the, re the regular super of this is just a dollar card. So let's see. So I've gotta go in there and change it to first edition, add the XZ tank cannon, go back in, change it to unlimited, and this is just assuming everything is uh, near mint, which, I can tell you right now, it's not going to be. It's probably going to be light play. I mean, for for me, that's near mint. But people will say it's light play, so I got to list it at that. Mirror Force from MRD. Wow, there's two of them. So this is light play, and this one I'm not even going to bother looking at. I have to remember to look in and see if there's two or three of these. I went through, spent about 20 minutes entering in every card manually like I was showing before, changing the condition to light play as default and changing the edition when it needed to. So let's flip through and show you guys the values here. e tallies were 17 each, three of them. Ring of Destruction, 27 for Ultimate and Limb. First edition XZ Tank Cannon is 20. Vanity's Emptiness Secret Rare is 16. Number 49, $14.50, $13. Ultimate Rare C107, $17. Ultimate Rare Sage of Silence first, $13. Destiny Hero Plasma is $7.50, it's at the end of the list. Downward Magician, $15. DR04 Silva, $19. Crystal Bond, Ancient Millennium, $14.5. Metamorphosis First Edition is $7.77. Cyber and Dragon Secret Rare, apparently jumped in price to $30. Torrential Tribute, Labyrinth of Nightmare is $10. Decatron, $12. Gradle Dragon, nine. Infinity from Bosch is somehow $30. Okay. Solemn Strike. Mega Pack is 12. Totally awesome is 10. TR Misu, $15.50 each for the commons. Buster Blader is 10. Yugi's World on Limb. LC5D Shooting Star Dragon is 13. Common Photon Sanctuary from Battle Pack 2 is 15. Malefic Cyber and Dragon has seen a recent price spike since I bought it, $30. Sphere Mode, there are three of them at 10 bucks each. Number 100, there are two of them at 10 bucks each. First Edition MRL Giant True Nade is 14 bucks. Two Ghost Trick Marys at 10 bucks each. A Yubel Secret Rare for 10. Ghost Trick Lantern, 11 bucks. Three Herald of Perfection, $9 each. Number 95, $9. Foolish Burial, there are two of those from Joey's World at 838 each. Starving Venom is 10 and a half. Mistletane, because of the Dragoonity support in Ghost from the Past, has jumped up in price. So if you have these supers laying around, I had about 10 of them. <laughs> Those are $8 each. Void Vanishment, sitting at nine. Pudding Cess, two of them at four bucks each. I think you got a reprint in Ghosts, which is why it's down, but the other one is up because it didn't get reprinted. Archfiend is eight and a half. Logia from Dusa is five and a half. First edition, Defusion, two of those from LON. Five bucks a pop. Super Banshee, it's nine dollars because it's seen play now apparently. Cyber Dragon Secret Rare, eleven dollars. Two Cyber Darkness Dragon at six and a half each. Pilica, I sold probably ten of them at six bucks each and then they jumped to like thirty dollars and then immediately tanked back down to eighteen. So right now they're sitting at apparently ten bucks each. Reborn Tengu, the Ultra Rare, eight dollars. Two Galaxy Expedition at eight and a half each. Return of the Dragon Lord Super at seven and a half. Shatterfoil Herald of Orange Light, that's six bucks. Cyber Angel Edaton, $7. Cosmic Cyclone Secret is 6 Ultra Gale from LC5D is sitting at 7.5. Damaged Infernal Fire Blast. Dusa BLS is 7 
three hoot cake in there, six bucks each. Book of Moon, six bucks. Valor Gold is six. Fog Blade is four for a common. Two Secret Guardian of Order on limbs, seven a pop. Solemn Judgment Secret on limb from Yugi's World is nine. Wing Karibo, four bucks. Number 99 Utopic Dragon is seven. Madolte Palooza, seven bucks, and there's two of them. Almost done. Polly, secret, five dollars. Reflesia is three, apparently. It's pretty cheap. Alpha is 470. Evil Hero Infernal Wing is 260. Two more. Galaxy Eyes number 95, 10 bucks each. Prohibition Common is two. Void Imagination is eight. Double Summon Red. Duelist League is five. Baldurok, seven bucks. Secret Wyvern is six. Red Eyes Slash is nine. Orient Dragon is six. Mathematician Secret is six. Chaos Command Magician, this is also damage, so I put it at heavy play. 18 was for light play, so I guess there's no heavy play prices. I'm guessing I'd get eight or 10 for it and then the Plasma and the Shatterfoil Herald. So the total value of everything in this binder so far is $978.53. That is the list. That's how I did it. Now, I will very quickly go through the stuff in these boxes and the hollows that are laid out because I'm not gonna price these things because the video is getting way too long already. However, apparently everything in a sleeve is worth a dollar or more. And it's nice to have a bunch of these sleeves. And look at those, like three Uriahs in there, three Raviel. If there's anything in here that really stands out to me that I know has jumped, I'm going to comment on it. Believe it or not, the, uh, the common Ojama stuff is actually pretty valuable. Some rare Foolish Barrel, a lot of rare Foolish Barrels, probably 10 of them. Fossil Dig. Battle Ball is like a $5 super, so that's good. Unless it tanked. Super Poly was like 10 bucks for the common, and then it got a gold rep uh, Ghost Reprint. Ghost from the Past Reprint. The Kaiju's rares are actually jumping up. And believe it or not, if you have like any rare blaster from uh, Lord Tachyon Galaxy, they're like $6 each right now for some reason. And the secrets are actually about the same price, so it's one of those things like it only has two printings, the secret and the rare, and then the mega pack rare, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Am I going to sell it right away or hope that because it only has one printing, it's going to keep going up? Like in the case of Rescue Cat, I sold that right away at six and a half, and then it went to 14, but I don't want to miss the high, so... It's all about would I rather miss out on potential and get the guaranteed cash, or would I rather potentially lose more if it tanked? But look how cool this deck box is. So I'm glad this was a throw in. I originally offered like 400 for the stuff in the binder and then 70 for the bulk, and then I just said, what if you just did 500 for absolutely everything? He countered six. We met in the middle at 575 because of shipping costs. So I think I got a pretty good steal on this. It's going to take me a while to sell all of this lower end stuff for sure, but not too long to sell the higher end stuff. Ghost Ogre. Whoa. Retro Pack Gores. Retro Pack cards can... It seems like there's almost no ceiling on how expensive they can get. That one right now, not that pricey. I think it's only a couple bucks. But there's a potential. Oh, quick tip. If you're looking through your older cards and you see a secret rare, see how the lines are going like this on the secret? In the, in the holographic area? The parallel lines are what make a secret rare. If they go the other way, it's called a reverse secret. It's a misprint. They're very rare to come by for newer things, as I, as I understand. But like, if you can find a really old secret with reverse secret foiling, just be aware that it might be worth more. Well, I couldn't find what I wanted to show you, but I have a Gaia the Fierce Knight from LOB, which seems to be a really common time to get that misprint where the lines are going the wrong direction. And the lettering, secret rare lettering is normally silver and ultra rare is gold. See, it's silver. But this one that I'm talking about has the ultra rare lettering on a secret card. So it's it adds some value. I hope these things can come out. 
Nope, that would be a bad idea to pull on that. How do I even do this? <laughs> See, Encore, that shot up to like seven bucks recently. Back down now, of course. Harpy's Featherstorm, I think that's like six. Whoa, hello. I wonder if he knew about this. Ultimate rare, Proto Cyber Dragon. It's got a dent there, so that's unfortunate. So, mod play, heavy play. It would be light play if not for the... Uh, the front looks great is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's a $15 card if it's in light play, but that's not. So, we'll see how much I get for it. I don't know. I also wanted to do something like where I kept track of everything that would sell from this set of cards. And then, like... Oh, show, sure. here's how much I actually got for it at the end of the day, but it's not quite that easy with this. Wow, I'm finding a lot of decently valuable stuff in here. So I didn't have him send me pictures of all of the lower end stuff. Like he did it first, and then I'm like, oh, I don't need to say it all. I don't know how he was valuing it, so I just had to offer based upon the higher end stuff and then just say, all right, uh, let's just round up and see what I can pay for it all. Hey, yes, Starfoil. If you want to sell me your collection, feel free to tweet me at Rubik's Guy on Twitter, obviously, because that's what tweeting is. And I will get back to you. Generally, I pay about 50% value on stuff that's $5 and above, because after fees from TCG Player, ooh, hello. TCG Player fees are about 12%, and then I have to ship it, which is about 43 cents out the door for my cost of envelope stamp and shipping shield. If there's ever any time that somebody needs a refund because it didn't arrive, then that cost has to be factored into it too. So let's take a look and see. A lot of people hear 50% and they're like, go F yourself, no way I'm selling you for 50%. But take a look at this, $5 card times 88% is what I get to keep after fees, minus 43 cents for shipping costs. I'm putting $3.97 in my pocket for selling a $5 card. That's why I pay $2.50 for it, because I'm getting $1.50 profit on selling a card. And that doesn't count the fluctuations that could happen. I could get it, and then a reprint could come out, and now it's worth a dollar. Or I could have to refund somebody the entire thing. And then I pay flat bulk rates based upon the rarity of the bulk. This is a card that he was talking about he found. It's pretty sweet. It's from an action figure set. MFO2. Let's take a look at how much this is worth. It's only $4, but still, I'm just gonna hold on to that and probably never sell it because those like really strange printings for cards can make them quite valuable. Another Herald of Orange Light, an Ultimate Rare, I will take that. Valor, yeah, this is a lot of like movable stuff that will. Like, I've been selling Fluffle Wings nonstop for 70 cents each. It's not much, but they have to pay an additional 78 cents if they buy anything, if people buy anything under five bucks for shipping costs. Yeah, I think I'm gonna list absolutely everything I got here, just as an experiment. But I also wanna get this video up sooner than later, so I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work. This is probably gonna be like a 40 minute video, it's insane. Because I want you guys to see all the good stuff. Remember when that was like a $50 card? I don't even know what it was worth. Oh, right, these are alphabetical. <laughs> I, I haven't played the game years, so I need to get back into it so I can understand different prices and stuff and why things might go up and why not. Cool. I'm glad I bought this. And I'm just pulling things out right now that I think could be somewhat valuable. I've been selling SIRS for $3.00 and 40 cents just all the time for the rare. Dante Common. So a lot of this time will be taken and uh, taking cards out of the sleeves. Scrap Recycler was like an $8 common at one point and then reprint city, do do do. Common, judgments are going for like three to four dollars all day. The Solitaires are a $5 common. Brionic should go back up in price so I'm probably not gonna list that one because it is the enabler of the deck. 
like Necroz had just come out and I think I had just recently stopped playing competitively. Misprint worth $500. No. Hey, another miss. Wow, those are three misprints in a row. Okay. I have a separate area for my misprints just because. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Transcendent Wings. This is a light play, Transcendent Wings. I know the Ultimate Rare Wing Karibo stuff in first can be super valuable. So let's see about this. Sweet. I love it when I find stuff like this in the bulk. It's unlimited, but it could go for like, I don't know, 8 to 20. So that's a really nice find. Although I don't really sell my ultimate rares. I have a binder of all of them. And then sometimes they'll just shoot up. Chateau. No, that's not the valuable one. One last stack. Original Royal Command, not first ed. Ronin Toten, first ed. Those are a couple bucks. Secret Mirror Force. Oh, money, 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 money. What's this? Oh, a backwards Leviar. <laughs> Hello, Ultimate Rare Karma Cut. Hopefully you're not too damaged. Looking at this, wow, looks so good, but you get it up close. You see the nick in the corner. You see the kind of random warping. And down here you see all the dents and this kind of right angle damage. So this is at least mod play, probably heavy. Ultimate Rare Karma Cut. The TCG player app is so slow. This is real time. It's a uh, eBay is super freaking fast. Heavily played, nineteen dollars. Really nice find. And then I think I need to go through. No, I did that one already. I've yet to post the high end stuff, but like I said, did a bunch of small sales. They're coming in. It's real nice. Lots of time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Jameson, Rubik's Sky out.